To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Well, the running joke that I have been using with people here recently is, how are your New Year's resolutions coming along? You know, a couple of months ago, everything you thought was going to happen this year, every reference point you had for what normal would be was kind of obliterated. So uh, New Year's resolutions are out the door. Uh, we are in a, a period of global... Un- unrest, unease, and no one is really sure how it's going to go. But all we do know is that we are in a challenging time. So how do we need to address this and what adjustments do we need to make in our mindset, in our businesses, and how can we use this as an opportunity to grow and to serve other people at a higher level. Today's guest is already doing this, thinking about it, putting it into practice, and he's going to share his wisdom with us for redefining what it means to be an entrepreneur or a small business owner in the pandemic era. Brandon Green is a real estate entrepreneur. He's co-founder of the Keller Williams Capital Properties Real Estate Brokerage Organization with eight offices and 1,000 associates in the Washington, D.C. area. He is an investor and an advisor to several small businesses, including businesses in hospitality, technology, and education. Brandon is also a member of YPO.org, a global leadership organization where he is the learning officer in the U.S. Capital Region for 2020 and 2021. So he is right on the front line of all of this change, and I'm really uh, pleased to welcome him to the show. Brandon Green, welcome. Thank you, Ralph. I am excited to be here today. Well, I can't think of a better person I'd rather talk to than someone who is this invested in small business, in uh, the nuts and bolts of what makes the economy go, to hear from the front lines what's happening, what do we need to do, how do we redefine who we are to adjust ourselves to this pandemic era. Before we get to that, first tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your story and how did you get to where you are now? Sure, sure. So I am originally from Wyoming and uh, grew up in Iowa as well. And I moved to the Washington, D.C. area in 1999. And shortly after coming here, I got into sales initially in information technology staffing sales, which was fun. It was one of those 100 cold calls a day kind of environment, <laughs> complete with ring the bell when you make a sale. <laughs> right? Yeah, and, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was a bit of a shocker for me because previous to that, I was touring with an international musical organization called Up With People. And I did that right out of high school. And that was all about world peace and, and cultural uh, connection and, and traveling the world and seeing people. So I went from this, like, you know, all inspiration, all empowerment to a hardcore sales job mm. in, in one, uh, one step. So I learned a lot in that and eventually moved to Washington DC and I, had, I got a, uh, an opportunity to buy a piece of real estate on Capitol Hill and uh, discovered this idea that you could buy real estate with no money down almost anyway, by using some great government first-time home buyer programs. And I, I bought my first piece of real estate on Capitol Hill. I, I didn't realize that real estate was available on Capitol Hill. Indeed, indeed. So wow. in 2000, I bought my first piece of real estate and renovated it, sold it, made a bit of a profit. And my real estate agent at the time said, you know what? You kind of got a knack for this. Maybe you should get into real estate as a full-time gig. 
And I did. I ended up getting my license and beginning to grow a real estate practice. And by 2001, I was fully in it. So that was sort of like the beginning years of just getting into sales and understanding what it meant to do that and then learning about real estate um, right at around 2001. And then sort of fast forward a little bit, I eventually realized I wanted to build a bigger company. And by 2006, I partnered with some guys here in Washington and we, we launched Keller Williams Capital Properties and began a broader vision of transforming lives, careers, and communities through real estate and set out to not only build a great real estate brokerage company in partnership with Keller Williams, but also to build some of the other auxiliary services around real estate title, real estate development, uh, staging and interior design, and 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 worked on that really for a number of years to to build a, a group of businesses that support the real estate transaction, and those are still operating today. So that that's sort of been the past in terms of what I've been doing. It's been all real estate uh, with a couple little side ventures and, until the last couple of years where I've really broadened that out. And I'm now working with a lot of other small business owners and entrepreneurs and some other industries. And that's been really exciting and rewarding. That's really exciting when you consider the fact that you have founded and grown a real estate organization um, with sales now exceeding $2 billion. That's B. Two billion with a B, and yeah, crazy. I I don't understand. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yes. and yet you you and yet you still are investing uh, time and resources and wisdom into helping small business owners. I I just think that's that's awesome. That's where my heart is, as well. Yeah, and, and that's what I learned in that process. As the company grew, it was really interesting to watch us go from startup to not start up anymore and really small business to, you know, still under the definition of small business, which, you know, is a whole other story of how small business is defined, though it was certainly a lot bigger of a small business. And I, I learned in that that I really like the small businesses. I like the, the, the earlier phase of the business cycle, the, like the gritty entrepreneurial phase. And um, as the business grew, I realized I wanted to make sure that that business continued to succeed and grow and expand, but that I was able to access some of these other earlier opportunities and help other entrepreneurs along the way and, and bring some of the lessons learned on, from us on our end, which were hard. Unfortunately, lessons learned are usually not pretty. <laughs> right? <laughs> they're, they're usually uh, difficult. And nobody's, nobody goes, well, that was a wonderful lesson to learn. Well, maybe in hindsight, <laughs> but when you're going through it, it's tough. So <laughs> yeah. my hope is to bring that now to some other entrepreneurs and say, hey, don't do this. Do this instead. Because let me tell you, that doesn't end well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I've really enjoyed that. Most businesses don't survive the first five years. You've done more than than survive, obviously. And you, you've also managed to navigate some very difficult and challenging times, in, including the financial crisis of uh, 2008. Now we are right. in a, a global pandemic where yes. we've got to figure out a new skill set. And you call it redefining what it means to be an entrepreneur yes. and a small business owner in this period of time. Yep. Walk us through what what is the paradigm shift that we need to make here? Well, I think that we have we've really seen in the last few months that small business enterprise in America wasn't actually working so well for a lot of small business owners and for their employees, I would say. And, and, and this is evidenced by the, the sheer number of small businesses that have already gone out of business and, and those that will go out soon after a relatively short period of, of revenue disruption. Not that this hasn't been a severe situation. It has been. So we saw and are seeing now, right, businesses closing up shop in immediately in a week or two or, or six or eight weeks. And, and not only did they not have the reserves to sort of handle a hit, uh, didn't even have the ability necessarily to access the help that was available to them. And so I really had a bit of a, an awakening around that where I was like, wow, what appeared to have been a real 
a booming economy that was producing a lot of entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurism had become really sexy, right? And everybody really wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And and all of a sudden, like the tide went out and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Like people are really not in good shape. And I thought, well, that that needs to change going forward. I mean, we're seeing this uh, massive sort of macro shift in some industries, hospitality and restaurants are the two that come to mind immediately. So we're needing to see, or we're already seeing some of these micro shifts in individual entrepreneurs and how they're thinking. And I'll give you one specific example. You know, prior to the COVID-19 outbreak, really, we were looking at our businesses and the businesses we were investing in and advising in and saying, look, you know, you really, three, three months of cash reserves is great. Like get to three months of cash reserves. But nobody within that was predicting that revenue could go to zero. Mm, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so there is now a whole paradigm shift around cash reserves as a, as a small but powerful example of how people need to think about it. And, you know, until you have fairly substantial runway, you know, you're not where you need to be. And so entrepreneurs, we get into business usually looking for the upside and opportunity. We're, we're not usually oriented to the downside and to the risks. That's generally not how a lot of entrepreneurs are wired. And so I think one of the big paradigm shifts is around risk management and, and taking an opportunistic, rebel-rousing entrepreneur and, and say, wait a minute, let's look at the possible downside here. And how do we make sure that we put into place some, some good systems and some good control mechanisms to ensure the business's viability in the event of disruption? Not something that we were talking a lot about prior to the pandemic. Yeah, when, when everything is really humming along and business is booming and the phone's ringing and you're busy making sales, everything's great, unemployment's yeah. low, the news cycle is is on other things besides uh, a global pandemic, um, it, it's difficult not to succeed in that environment. The challenge is, as it you is. pointed out, yeah. how, how do we position ourselves for success when things don't go the way we planned. And it sounds like what you described is, is that a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs kind of run their business the way people manage their personal finances with very little savings, no nest yeah. egg, no cushion. It sounds like yeah. they've been running their business the same way. And when that cash flow stops, uh, they're basically living paycheck to paycheck on their business and they they go out of business a whole lot faster. That's right. I mean, we've all seen the stats that you know four out of five Americans or whatever are living living paycheck to paycheck. You know, very few can afford anything more than a five hundred dollar expense. We've seen those kind of stats. I think what we were a little less clear on was, like you're saying, that businesses were running in a similar pattern. And the the problem, I think, is you know businesses have a very high fiduciary relationship in the community and with their employees. And we have an obligation as business owners to really have our act together because we are creating a big impact on people's lives, both the people we employ, our customers we're servicing. So, you know, you may personally be willing to take the risk to run your finances at the razor edge, but when you own a business, you have a higher, I believe you have a higher degree of responsibility to manage that. And, and that really comes from a lot of my own personal experience. I mean, I did not come into business trained to be in business. I, I didn't even finish college. I mean, I went to a year and a half of community college. I was like, you know what, this isn't for me. And I immediately got into sales and, and the rest is history. So I did not come into business with any really good formal business training, let alone financial training. And, you know, probably 10 years in, I found myself still a bit in the hole and frustrated by tax issues and debt issues and and seeing that I was making great revenue, but wasn't like, where did all the money go? Was it sort of the question I had in my mind? And, and that was a painful personal process for me to work through. And it was a challenging business process as well. You know, I got really close there to, you know, losing it all uh, around, you know, 2007, 2008. And so now I'm like, okay, we've got to do better. We've got to do better as business owners to take full responsibility for what's going on in our businesses financially. And, 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 and a mindset shift that I had to make that I'm really working with others to make, which is, look, 
as an entrepreneur, you may be willing, you may be able to delegate some of this stuff. Like, I don't really want you doing the books per se. You cannot delegate the understanding of this stuff. And if you do, inevitably, you're going to find yourself in a real pickle down the road. (laughs) And this pandemic accelerated that and, and blew that up in a huge perspective. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are unable to pivot from that right now. Uh, many will, you know, we're seeing the entrepreneurial resilience, you know, people are hustling and hustling hard to save things. And that I think will in the long run be beneficial. But in the meantime, it's a lot of pain. And I'm hopeful that we're able to turn the corner in this period of time and build better, more solid businesses that are more sustainable going forward. Hmm. That, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, to put the positive uh, spin on this, Fast forward a few weeks, a few months, at some point we are going to emerge into a post-pandemic reality. And uh, some yeah. people say, well, everything's just going to come back the way it was before. It sounds like there's some systemic issues and problems where maybe everything and everyone is not going to come back just like they were before because this has been such a damaging thing. You are advising uh many small business owners, organizations. How would you advise yeah. our listeners and where they need to be? How, yeah. how can they emerge from this and be ready uh, to hit the ground running when things are back to some kind of a normal standard? Well, I've been advising uh, and operating our existing operating businesses too around a three-phase strategy and saying we are really ending phase one, which is sort of the emergency liquidity, emergency pivoting phase. It's the, like, what must be done now to save the business phase? And I, I, I think most people are coming out of that or they've decided they can't save the business. So, you know, what does that look like? That is accessing the various government programs that are available, PPP dollars, you know, you know those are available uh, until the end of June. Still, maybe there'll be more, but being able to access all possible forms of emergency liquidity, um, emergency renegotiation of lease payments, you know, right sizing uh, staff and employee costs, canceling anything and everything that's not generating revenue. Like that's been phase one. That's been emergency triage mode for the last three months. Yeah, that, right? That's like bailing and, the water out of the, the ship that's got a big hole in it right yeah. now. Exactly. And now we're entering phase two. For those that succeeded in phase one, we're entering phase two, which is an interesting key question. And that is, do I have a viable business plan going forward? Like, do do I actually have a product or service that works anymore? And, and for many businesses, the answer is no. I mean, we, we uh, and, and many of the answer is yes, but we, we sped up the evolutionary process of our society, you know, by five or 10 years. And so there's a real question we need to be asking ourselves, which is, do we have a viable business going forward? If the answer is yes, great. Then how do we make that better? If the answer is no, what changes can be made to make that work? And that could be, uh, you know, pivoting the, the business service. I, I'll get a good example of restaurants, right? Restaurants right now said, wow, like in-house dining isn't going to work for mm. the foreseeable future. We need to do a robust delivery service. Great. That's a, that's a great example we can all relate to of how we've seen businesses pivot. I, uh, I love so that. Two is really the evaluation of that. I love that example because um, it, my wife was commenting on instead of going to the grocery store and shopping the way we always have shopped, now we order things online. Mm-hmm. We go and pick it up at the curb. They deliver it. They put it in the trunk for us. Um, and we don't yeah. even have to get out of the car. And w- both of us are like, we kind of like this. I, I kind of like this better than the old way of, you know, schlepping like around the store the f- for an hour and a half. Uh-huh. M- maybe we like yep. this new normal. And so that's another example of businesses and brands adapting, creating new services or expanding on their existing products and services to meet needs in a, in a new and different way. And they may find out here's an innovation that our customers actually like, and they want to keep. That's right. So hopefully by now, you know, as a business owner, that there's some things you've done different in the last couple of months that are kind of working and, and that people are really drawn to it and have taken advantage of that service or product. How can you pour fuel on that fire? Like, 
don't go back. I was talking to my, my doctor the other day because they had pivoted to a full virtual do, you know, doctor visit set up. And, and previous to that, they were very old school, right? You had to come in for everything. Nothing was via email, <laughs> nothing. Well, they pivoted fully to digital. And I said, I said, I hope you don't go back yeah. to what was the plan before. Like, I like this in many cases, quick get on a Zoom call doctor visit. So you know, what is the innovation that you've taken on in the last two or three months out of sheer need and necessity that now becomes a strategic opportunity as you really build out a new set of services or a new way of operating and delivering or a new product. So that's, that's like phase two. I see that as this summer, right? Mm -hmm. This is rapid prototype time. This is take action that the entrepreneurs that are going to do well this year and next are just rapidly testing things and being okay with the fact nobody actually has the answers. And that's hard as entrepreneurs, right? Because we like to see good results and feedback and we like to have plans and we like to know what the projections are going to be. <laughs> Toss a lot of that out of the window this summer. This is like do some experimenting through execution and action. Spend as little time in the strategic boardroom as you can and do as much active and rapid testing as possible. Speed as the advantage this summer, I believe, mm. in phase two. Excellent. Perfect. So yeah. um, so phase now, one is the emergency liquidity phase, you know, just trying to bail water yeah. to keep the ship afloat. Uh, phase two is figuring out, do we even have a viable business? Mm -hmm. Do we need to, are we going to be in the same business going forward as what we have been? How can we innovate? What do we yep. need to do? Speed. And then the third phase. The third phase is really the acceleration of what you've learned over the summer, right? Is saying, okay, by the end of the summer, we need to make some, some decisions, probably plant some seeds and make some bets. And now you can recast your budget. You can recast your plans. By the end of the summer, we will have six solid months of learning in this new environment. And we will need to, we will probably need to draw some conclusions at that point and, and make some investments carefully, thoughtfully. The fall might be a good time to make a hire or two, right? You know, judiciously, given the budget and the, and the economic environment that we're in. Um, but I really think phase three is where you pour some fuel on the fire from your learning in phase two and you accelerate and grow. A lot of that is to plant the seeds for a great 2021. But I, I think by the fall, we can press the gas pedal down a little bit and say, we now know how to operate in a pandemic world. We now know how to operate in a rapidly accelerated virtual world with some digital coming back. And we now know how to move our business in that environment where it's digital first, physical enhanced. And, and now I think we can make some progress as we go into phase three, assuming you still have solid liquidity. Because I think for some businesses, the fall and the winter could be tough. So I want people to go into that phase with as much cash as possible uh, in the event things get a little tough again next winter. Very, very sage wisdom there. Um, considering that no one knows how things will turn out, I think that is an excellent three-phase strategy to get us from where we are to where we want to be. And um, I, I really appreciate you sharing uh, your insight on that. I think that makes a lot of sense. You, in, in addition to running a, a multi-billion dollar organization and advising and investing, you're also a keynote speaker and entrepreneur. What are you working on right now that's got you really excited as if you don't have enough going on? <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, I'm, I've really been interested in and working on getting under the hood with small businesses and entrepreneurs and seeing what we can do to turn their business around right now and working with people in sort of these 90 to 120 day sprints to uh, shore up their financials, make sure they've got some good processes and that their team is built for the future uh, and, and helping them reposition. It, it's essentially the work that we often do when we go in to invest in a business. And, you know, prior to COVID-19, we were doing it from the, the perspective of how do we make this a more investable business? And we're still doing that, though right now it's really a lot of 100 or 90 to 120 day sprints with business owners to get under the hood, roll up our sleeves and help them reposition the business for the future. So I'm excited about that. We're really building a community 
of fellow entrepreneurs around that, people that are pivoting rapidly and are excited about the opportunities in the future and are making quick decisions and, and getting a lot better as a result of that. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about the results that we're seeing. I mean, we, we were able to work uh, with a number of businesses and help them secure, you know, collectively a few million dollars in PPP dollars and small business administration loans to reposition things. So I'm enjoying like, you know, roll up my sleeves and really get in there with the business owner and help them move their financials forward. So that's a lot of fun right now. Very exciting and very neat, very needed. So um, I, I appreciate your efforts along yeah. those lines. If our listeners need to reach out and uh, find out more about Brandon Green, the place to go is brandongreen.com. And we will have that link yeah. posted on the Rebelpreneur website as well. So uh, people, organizations, businesses, entrepreneurs can connect with you and um, and and learn uh, of what's working, what's yeah. not working, and, and get the motivation and inspiration that they need. So I really appreciate the yeah. uh, the insights mm-hmm. here, uh, Brandon. Any final thoughts or big takeaways you'd like to leave us with? Well, you know, I, I think as a final thought, a lot of people get into business and find that the, they end up working hard for the business, but the business doesn't necessarily work well for them. Mm-hmm. Right? So uh, I think this is a great reset opportunity for all of us to ask the question, how do I make my business work for me and my financial goals and what I'm trying to do in my life rather than the other way around, right? So as entrepreneurs, because we're all in on these businesses, that can be, mm, that could be a little dysfunctional too. <laughs> yeah. So my hope is this time gives us that chance to really say, well, how do I make my business work for me and my financial goals rather than the other way around? And I believe that we've got an opportunity to do that. Never before, certainly in, 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 in a generation, have, have we had such a grand reset opportunity here? to really say no to all the things we don't want to do anymore and never really wanted to do, or just sort of took on our plate over time and start to say yes to the things that are forward thinking, forward looking and create opportunities for our, for our lives and for our businesses. Wonderful. Excellent. I've been speaking with Brandon green. He is a real estate entrepreneur and co-founder of the Keller Williams Capital Properties real estate brokerage organization with eight offices and a thousand associates in the Washington, D.C. area. He's also an investor and an advisor to several small businesses, including businesses in hospitality, technology, and education. So reach out to him and find out more. Tap into his wisdom at brandongreen.com. Brandon, thank you so much for being on Rebel Pernuber Radio today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.